Hi, so welcome to this short video about the University of Bristol's NAND board that we use in our computer architecture courses. Uh, what we've got here are the switches, which can be used as sort of variables within these equations that we might write. Uh, the outputs for the switches are here. Then we've got some constant values of 1 on each of these. And what we can see is that there are four groups here. And each of those groups contains four NAND gates inside of these chips. So there's 16 NAND gates in total. And each NAND gate has uh, two inputs, an A input and a B input. And the inputs are grouped on these pins. Now, if you're counting, there's, there's more pins there than just two per NAND gate. So actually, each input, there are two pins per input. So if we take this uh, first NAND gate, where the output is indicated by this LED, uh, it's inside here. So the inputs for that would be on these two pins for the A input and these two pins for the B input. And then we do the same going down. So we've got two pins for the A input of the second NAND gate, two pins for the B input of the second NAND gate, two pins for the A input of the third NAND gate, and two pins for the B input of the third NAND gate, and so on and so forth for the fourth. And then the same is replicated. So if we want to plug an input onto these, we can plug it onto either pin for the A input or either pin for the B input. It doesn't matter which. The reason for having two pins is that just that if we plug one input onto one pin, then we can take a copy of that input on the other one, from the other one. So as I've already said, the LED indicates the output that value for each um, NAND gate. So an off LED indicates the output of the NAND gate is zero, and an on, LED, an on LED would indicate that the value is a one. And we can see there's four LEDs going down, and they're in the same order as the input pins. The output pins are in a similar grouping. There's four pins for each output, so we can have four copies of each output, and it doesn't matter which one you plug onto. The first four pins correspond to the first NAND gate, the next four pins to the second NAND gate, and so on down the group. So the switches are the same as the outputs for the NAND gates. The outputs for the switches are in groups of four, uh, in the same order as the switches. And so the outputs on the switches are off by default, and when you press a button, the output would switch on. Uh, so off indicates a zero, and on indicates a one. The inputs on NAND gates are off by default, which means that they're zeros if they're not attached to anything. And if they're attached to a constant one, then obviously they're just a one. These output a one. You can plug that onto the input, give you a constant one going in. But if you plug on a switch, then if the switch isn't pressed, it will input a zero. If the switch is pressed, it will there will be a one coming out of the output, so there will be a one on the input. So we're going to demonstrate some of this now. Uh, to start with, we've got to plug in the USB. And what we can see is that when we plug it in and nothing's uh, wired up, all the LEDs are on. And this, this is what we'd expect, because NAND gates, uh, when their inputs are both zero, zero NAND zero is a one. So false NAND false is true. Uh, and the reason for this is that NAND means not AND. So an AND gate says if, if one thing is true and the other thing is true, then the result is true. Uh, and not AND is the inverse of that. So if uh, one thing is true and the other thing is true, then the result of an AND would be true. And you invert that. So the result of a NAND overall is false. So uh, we can now look a little bit at what happens when we plug stuff into this. So we'll start just by using constant values of 1. So we get a constant 1 from one of these single row pins. And then we can plug that onto an input. And we see that when we just plug 1 in, nothing changes. Because 1 and 0 is true and false. So if we think about it, that's true anded with 0, which is, sorry, that's true anded with false, which is 
just false and then we invert that so we get true and that's the same that doesn't change the output so if we then take another wire and we'll grab another constant value of one and obviously it, it doesn't actually matter which one of these constant values I plug onto um, and then we'll input that to the second input of our first NAND gate so that's the row next to it and what we see is that the LED switches off indicating our output is now off so that means we're getting a zero or a false out of it and this makes sense because true NANDed with true is false as we established earlier so that shows us that this is working as we'd expect it to do for that NAND gate and we can chain NAND gates together so say for example we wanted to build this circuit what we have is one NANDed with zero which we can build like this so we're just not attaching anything to the second input of the first NAND gate and then we want to build the output of that first NAND gate chained to another NAND gate so I'm going to use the next one down and we want to NAND that again with one so now we have two NAND gates chained together the first one doing one NAND zero and the second one taking the output of the first and NANDing it with one and we see that the LED of the second one switches off now this also makes sense because here we're inputting a 1 and a 0, so 1 and 0 is 1. That means our output is 1, which we're taking back and putting in that result, so 1, nanded with 1, which gives us 0 on our second output. And we can chain these together as much as we like across the whole board. So I could, for example, instead of doing it back to an AND gate on the same group, I could have done it to an AND gate on a different group. And in fact, I could just use a one from one group to be in the other group. And we see the same result just on a different gate. So I'll reset the board now by pulling all the wires off. So I've said that we can chain NAND gates together by taking outputs to inputs. Um, and we can also use switches in the same fashion. So we take the output of a switch and plug it onto an input and we take the output of another switch and plug it onto the input. So we can use these two switches now as though they were variables. So we can do X and Y as these two inputs and that produces two outputs on the red and blue wires. So blue is X and red is Y. And then we input those to a NAND gate so whatever the value of the switches is, in other words, the values of X and Y, those will go into the NAND gate and we'll see the result. So this would allow us to test every single combination. So if I press X, we see one NAND zero. If I depress X, we're getting zero NAND zero. If I press Y, we're getting zero NAND one. And if I press both together, we see the LED goes off because I'm now doing one NANDed with one. Or another way of saying it would be true NANDed with true. Okay, so that gives us a way to bring variables into our system. Um, we might then wonder, you know, how can we build more complex things out of this? Well, by chaining gates together and doing interesting things to the inputs. So, for example, uh, we should know by now how to build a NOT gate. So if we take an X variable, plug it onto one of the inputs, and now I'm going to take a copy of X and plug it onto the second input and again it doesn't matter which of the two pins for the B input I plug into so I could plug it on there or I could plug it onto the one behind as so show so this now gives us X NANDed with X and if we look on the truth table that's either 1 NAND 1 or 0 NAND 0 and what we notice is that 0 NANDed with 0 gives us a 1 and if I press the switch, I get one NANDed with one, which gives us a zero. And those are the only two possible combinations. So what we've created here is a NOT gate. So that's very useful. With a NOT gate, we can start to do more things. Uh, we know that a NAND gate is uh, an AND gate inverted. 
But if we do not of a NAND gate, well, now we've inverted twice in a row, so we they just cancel out. So we end up with what is just an AND gate. So let's see if we can build that. We could do X and Y on those two, and we could NAND them together. So now we get X NAND Y, and if we take the output of that and put it onto a second NAND gate, and now we're just going to invert that output by the same way we did before, so taking a copy of that input and putting it onto the one next to it. And now we see that the second LED gives us the result of X and Y. So here it's 0 and 0, which is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. One, 0 and 1 is 0. But if when I press both together, 1 and 1 makes 1. So true and true, as we'd expect, is true. So that's a simple AND gate, and hopefully you can see how that's working. So the overall result is that we can use these NAND, these NAND boards to build quite complex circuits. Uh, we can build everything from uh, simple gates like this through to full adders. And in fact, if we get a second NAND board, then we can actually chain the results together from one board to the next if they're supplied by the same power supply, uh, which you can achieve uh, by plugging a USB cable into this one into the same U uh, sorry into the same group of USB ports on a computer or, or multi-port power supply. If they're on if they if the power comes from different power supplies then the voltage levels uh, will actually be different and the boards won't function properly. So the last few things to cover is how well protected this board is. Uh, the board is protected against uh, building bad circuits. So if we try to connect an output directly to some kind of constant value, um, it won't work. So if we connect a one directly to a switch, then what we're effectively doing is invalidating whatever the switch is because it's the output is constantly being forced to a one. Um, Equally, if we try to wire the input of an AND gate to its own output, we see that initially that doesn't seem to change anything. Um, but if we actually start wiring this together, um, then we see the LED goes dim. Because now this NAND gate is essentially stuck in a very fast infinite loop, you could think of it as. Um, so what's happening is the output switches to zero and then uh, that causes both of these inputs to be zero, which means the output should switch to a one, and then it switches to a one, and so on and so forth, because this is just continuously inverting. So um, electrically, that's not really what's happening. What's, what's actually happening is they're sort of shorting it out, but you know, conceptually, that's, that's okay. Um, that's what's happening. So we can't wire the output of a gate to its own input, but we can do it through multiple gates in a row. Um, yeah, so I'm now going to label what all these parts are. So here we've got switches. Here we've got constant values of one. And the same here. Here we have inputs and the same again here. And here we have outputs. So these inputs are in groupings that I described. So we've got four pins, and they're separated into columns like this. So the first column in this orientation is the A input for an AND gate, and the second column is a B input. So these are the A's, these are the B's. And these go to a NAND gate, and the inputs go in like this. 
and the output comes out to here. So on the output, we have four pins. And what we notice is that all four pins are actually connected together on the outputs and the two pins on the inputs are connected together. So this translates exactly to what's here. We have the A inputs with two pins, we can use either. The B inputs with two pins, we can use either. And the outputs with four pins, and we can use any of them. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you now understand how to use these NAND boards a bit better. Um, good luck in the labs.